So I'll salvage this old CD rack. I think we're gonna turn it into a bookcase. Check it out. So I got hold of this old shelving unit and thought I'd upcycle it into a small bookcase for some of my kids' books. Not that I read kids' books, they're books for my kids. Anyway, I gave a look over it and it seems to be made of pine, which has had a number of coats of stain and varnish on. There are four shelves in total, but they're too small to hold any books as it stands, so I've got an idea to adapt it and make it work. I randomly found a yellow BB pellet during my inspection and judging by the marks in the back, I suspect this was used for target practice at some point. The shelves are held in place using dado joints, also known as housing joints, along with nails and probably a bit of glue. The top seems to be held on with glue and nails and the back is simply nailed in place from what I could tell. I'll start out by dismantling it as best as I can while causing minimal damage. Removing the top just needs a bit of persuasion from the rubber mallet and as I suspected it was just glue and nails. A little more persuasion from the mallet and the back came off with very little effort as it was just nailed on. I removed the nails from the back along with the top. I want it to just have two shelves in order for it to hold books and one of these shelves will be the base so I'm just planning to leave the middle shelf which means I need to take the other two out. I figured the easiest way to do this is to get my mallet and knock them out. With a bit of force in the right places they actually popped out really easily. I can then remove the nails from the sides. And the ones that remained in the shelves. I can use the two shelves to create the pieces I need next. I want to make a lip for the front of the two shelves so I can place the books on them with the covers facing outwards as they won't fit side on and this works well for my kids to see the covers of the books they want to read. To make the lips for the shelves I need to measure the distance between the two sides. Remember, the shelves I took out were housed in dado grooves on each side, so I actually sit slightly longer than the space I need. So I'll need to trim off some of them to make it fit. I trimmed off one end on the mitre saw just to tidy it up, but decided that I'll cut the final length off on the table saw as I could get a more accurate measurement between the blade and the fence. We've now got a nice snug fit which is exactly what we want so there are no gaps at the ends. I've decided to make the lips 40 millimetres, about one and a half inches tall and this fits in with the proportions of the unit and will hold the books on nicely while still allowing for easy access for getting the books in and out. I set my table saw fence and ran the pieces through to give me the two shelf lips I need. So I test fit them and they fit perfectly. I need to fill the gaps in the dado grooves. So in order to do this, I'm going to use pieces from my shelves as they're already the perfect thickness to fit in the dado. So I'll mark where they need cutting, line up the table saw fence, and trim off a strip from one of the shelves so they can be glued into place within the grooves. Because I'm going to be painting this when I'm finished and I want a really flush finish with no little gaps, I think I'll cut it a little too shallow and add some wood filler to get a completely invisible finish on it. The fit looked good, so I cut it in half and made sure they fit perfectly. Then I cut another pair to go on the next level. Once they were cut, I quickly ran over the grooves with some sandpaper just to remove any leftover glue and rough splinters. Next, I added some glue, made sure it was spread out thoroughly, and then slotted the filler piece in place. I clamped it in place and got a nice bit of squeeze out which indicated that the joint should be nice and solid. I did exactly the same with the other three grooves and clamped them into place. 
I left it overnight and came back to remove the clamps once the glue was dry. Then I trimmed off any excess with my Japanese pull saw. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to be painted, which means I've got the opportunity to fill all the gaps and smooth out the finish with wood filler. I applied this liberally and ensured it was completely covered. I'll come back and sand this once it's dry. In the meantime, I can start removing the top layer of finish on the rest of the unit. You can do this with a low grit sandpaper, or in my case, I decided to scrape the top layer off with a standing knife blade. It's slightly faster than sanding it, but not overly different. Not to mention it can be a bit taxing on your hands with gripping the blade for too long. Sometimes it's just nice to do things a bit differently to keep things interesting. I then switched over to the random orbit sander and stuck a P60 disc on. On the curvier bits, I used this flexible sanding pad that helps go over the curves and edges a little bit easier. I wasn't keen on the rounded profile on the back panel and as it already had BB pellet dents in the back I thought I'd have a look at the back side of the panel and see if I like this better. The vertical line suited the modern aesthetic much more so I decided that I preferred this and went with it. I also decided that the curvy profile on the bottom skirt was a bit too fussy and old fashioned for my liking so I thought I'd smooth it out with a simple arch to give it a more modern look and for it to fit in more closely with the existing furniture we have where it's going to go. In order to do this, I marked a straight line where I wanted it to go and carefully cut along the line with my jigsaw. Now I forgot to hit the record button, so here's a dramatic reconstruction. I think it looks much more modern now. Once I'd done this, I'd already scraped the top layer of finish off, so it was just a case of removing the stain, tidying up the filler, and getting the whole thing smooth. There's only one way to make sanding interesting. Cue montage. Wow, that was hard work, but worth the effort and everything's looking lovely and smooth now. Here's a tip for you, don't waste your money on crappy Amazon sandpaper multi-packs where you get a million discs for a penny. They seem like a great deal, but you get a bunch of grits you don't actually need, they don't stick to the pad very well and fly off after only a short amount of time, and they wear away really quickly. I've learned this the hard way, and I'm definitely investing in better quality sanding discs next time because I'm getting fed up of using these discs all the time. I'm thinking either the Cubitron or Abronet discs next time as it stands, so I'll give them a go and see what I think. I might do a review of them, so let me know in the comments if you think this is something you want to see. Next, I'm going to glue in the front lips to the shelves by running a bead of glue along them and then clamping them down to the shelves and across the fronts. 
I decided these wouldn't need any screws or nails as the glue should be ample. However, I did decide that the shelves needed some additional reinforcement as they'd loosened a bit when I dismantled the unit and the nails weren't doing enough. So I pre-drilled some holes so as to avoid any splitting. Then I drilled a countersink and screwed a couple of screws in which pulled everything together nice and tight. The next step was to screw the back in place. I turned the unit upside down so that the top sat on my workbench and then I placed a small shim of plywood under the back panel so that it didn't catch and pre-drilled, countersunk and screwed the back into place. Then I drilled, countersunk and screwed the top on. Once I'd added all my screws, I filled them with some more wood filler along with any other areas that needed some dents and holes filling, such as the fronts where there were seams from the shelf lips. Once dry, I ran over them again with P120 and smoothed everything out before paint. I decided to add a coat of primer and I've had this tin of Zinsa BIM primer and sealer that everyone raves about. And I have to say, I totally agree with what everyone says. I've used this on so many projects now and because it's so thin, it just goes on and on, and on, and on. I just brush this on. And I always keep a roll of these little freezer bags on hand near my paint brushes so that I can just put the brush into the bag when I've finished in case I need to use it again for any touch ups and can then just clean the brush when finished. I spoke with my wife and we decided to paint the bookcase the same colour as the kitchen cabinets that I painted during lockdown. We've got some paint left over, so didn't need to buy any more. The paint we used is Farrow and Ball Cornforth White, which is actually grey, so go figure. I'm not sure what a cornforth is, but perhaps that's grey. Between coats I denibbed with a 400 grit just to get a smoother finish and did two coats in total. I used a paintbrush for the whole thing. I was considering using a roller, but I like the way the paint looks when it's brushed on rather than rollered. Ideally, I'd have a paint sprayer, and I've been researching a few that I think I've nearly made a decision on. However, if you've got any recommendations, please let me know in the comments. And there you have it, a fantastic new way to bring life to an obsolete piece of furniture. I mean, who uses CDs anymore anyway, right? Now, hopefully you enjoyed this project and it's inspired you to do something in your home. If you have, drop me a note in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. And if you did enjoy this project, you're going to want to watch this video next. See you next time.